Hi guys, welcome back, and for the final time, we are looking at our glorious Seleucid Empire that we have built, or should I say the second Alexandrian Empire, but this time bearing the name of Seleucos himself. What a glorious campaign we've had, and because last episode was so darn long, <laughs> we are going to do all the faction review stuff in here and we're going to start by looking at the map and this is our empire we have restored alexander's empire and expanded it in some cases parthia is our protectorate i just want to check is kyrene our protectorate at the start uh let's go to here diplomatic standing it does struggle a little bit uh yes kyrene is our protectorate so technically this is our land as well so we have fully restored Alexander's empire. It's not like we're missing uh, bits of North Africa there. We have fully restored Alexander's empire all the way from Pella and Thessalonica all the way through, uh, all the way through Anatolia, down through the Middle East, into Egypt and Alexandria, down the Nile, and all the way down to, honestly, the Horn uh, the Horn of Africa down here uh, towards, well, in uh, Djibouti, 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 or are we in Eritrea? I think, I think Djibouti and Eritrea, to be fair. Uh, but all the way down here, right across uh, the, from Yemen. So, yes. And, well, we did have a bit in Yemen at one point, but <laughs> that didn't turn out too well, did it? Uh, all the way down through Mesopotamia, all the way up to Bactria, Parthia and the Far Indus, even into India, and we have been successful in India. Public order issues have slowed down campaigning in this region, though, of course, because they hate us. But, <laughs> you know, apart from that, we have been everywhere. So we're going to take a look. Let's have a look at the toggle fog of war then. The Sirachis have done okay. They've got pushed back a little bit here because I think Bosporans, well, maybe they do have Saruba at the start, but the Bosporans have just chilled pretty much. They've not done too much. They've just chilled out, which I quite like, honestly. I like to see the AI just kind of chilling and defending its lands as well. The Sirachis go all the way into the sort of northern steppes, up into the forests um, of Russia, all the way up here, and all the way out to the east in towards the desert as well. So they have taken a lot of steppe land, but they are not exactly that strong because they don't have that many settlements, and a lot of their settlements are trash. Although there's minor cities there. So they must have had those for a little while. But yeah, large cities over here. Large cities. Uh, large cities and uh, a large city. I don't think they have a huge city, which is unfortunate for them. Although this one maybe. No, still a large city. So yeah, they're, they're okay. They've not done amazing. The Gete, on the other hand, have done pretty darn well. Look at these boys. Fighting back the Sirachis up here. They're towards our northern border. We do not actually oh we do border them actually so they are one of the most advanced factions out there one of the strongest factions so fair play to them for defeating all the rivals in this region the adrissians have survived which is amazingly surprising to me and they've got some fat armies as well so has tylus like how have they survived <laughs> honestly the antigonids didn't do much this whole game they really just fought among the other Greeks, which is very historically accurate, so. Uh, but yeah, Tylus still survives as well, which is kind of amazing, honestly. Same with the Odrysians. Fair play to them. Well done for surviving. So does the GCS in these three little settlements over here. We've got the Skordiski dominating the central Balkans over here and up towards southern Austria. Probably Slovenia. Around Slovenia. Ah, and actually probably just about into Austria as well. So fair play. The RDAI, the RDAI, they are over here and they have an okay land. It looks like the Skordiski are starting to push them back though. Very much looks like they probably are at war with the way the armies are set up, as you can see. So they've done all right. Epirus too has survived, but only just, only just. The RDAI have pushed them back and because I think at one point they did have some land all these four settlements, maybe. Uh, and also, Epirus over here uh, has got this little bit of land, which we probably should have taken. And probably this one as well. 
but it's fine. We're not going to complain at all. Rome, again, has done not much. <laughs> They've put the toe onto Sicily and not really done very much. Syracuse has taken the rest of Sicily. Well done, Syracuse. Turtle mania, turtling on the, on the island, seeing what they can do. Some big ports going on around here. And Syracuse itself is a huge city. Very nice indeed. Rome, is Rome a huge city? Looks like it, yes. And look at the amount of armies they've got, but they're just not using them. Classic. Uh, Massalia is still alive. Wow. I was not expecting that one. Three settlements it survives with. So do the Insubres up here. The boys still have these two settlements and actually have one more. They still have their central Germanic land as well. Wow. Some interesting things in here. The Lugii are dominating East Germania and up into the Slavic lands as well. Uh, they've gone quite far in these lands. All the way over here. Malan, Melan, Klein, Melan, Klein, Polis over here. Suebi still exists, but pretty weak. Kimbri still exists, but just in Denmark. Um, so do the Volkai over here. Chatty, sorry, not the Volkai. These are the Volkai. So the Volkai in the middle. Chatty still as well. And the Belier, they've not had... They've had a good game, but not the most amazing game. Probably because they've been bogged down fighting the Britons in the Trinovantes. The Britons, look at them. They've not taken much land. I mean, probably very historically accurate, to be fair. Uh, but yeah. And also the... Um, what are these guys? The Adui. A Dewey in the center here. Just a swathe across Gaul. The Arverni have come, kind of migrated south, which makes sense for where they started. And the, uh, what are these guys? The Allobroges, I think. The Allobroges are uh, confined to the Alpine foothills, which tends to happen a lot with those boys. They are confined over here. They are pushing down both the uh, A Dewey and the, sorry, the Arverni and the Allobroges into Massalia, which is quite interesting. And also, they've come into some of the Iberian lands. But Iberia, as usual, is split into three main uh, rival powers. The Edatani, the Aravachi, and the Lusitani. And honestly, out of them, the Aravachi are probably the strongest. They've got the full center of uh, Spain. The Lusitani have a lot of Portugal. They still haven't taken uh, Olisipo. Mad. Or maybe it's rebelled or something. But they've taken quite a bit of land as well. And the Editani look probably the weakest out of these boys. And surprisingly enough, Carthage still holds land in Spain. Wow. Well done. Better than I could do, AI. Better than I could do in 0.4. So fair play to you. Uh, fair play to you. And Massalia and Massalia. Uh, Massaciliae. And the Massaciliae and the Massacili. Both still exist because Carthage just cannot conquer them. <laughs> They're going for it. I mean, this guy doesn't even have us, anyone in there. Just go and take it, man. But Carthage does exist. Not in its final form. Not in its strong form. But in a form, <laughs> we're going to say. And they still have... I mean, they've got all of Sardinia and Corsica. So fair play. And they've still got the Balearic Isles. And still have their area in Spain. So it looks very much like they've been doing... A Seleucids in real life just trying to hold on to territory that they have um anyone else Kyrene of course I mean Greece we killed everyone so we don't want to go there the Sakharauka are still existing up here uh huge city I'm assuming there's our allies still and they've just been chilling not the uh, all conquering horde that you might expect wow there's a settlement all the way up there that would be so annoying if you were doing a, doing a world conquest. Same with these ones. God, the Rome to Quasari and the nine provinces. Wow. I mean, at one point, we were thinking of coming through here and taking some of these settlements. Now I think about that idea, the worse it gets. The worse it gets. Uh, but yeah, there's still some rebel territory in the world. Predominantly the deserts and India. But uh, yeah, predominantly these deserts and all the way through India as we can see but yeah we are by far the biggest faction out there the biggest empire the strongest empire the most glorious of empires 
So this campaign has lasted 161 turns. Actually, not quite as long as I expected, really, to be fair. But 161 turns. So let's go through all our uh, different facts and stats and everything. So let's have a look. First of all, on the faction summary. So if we just go to the standard faction summary. Capital is still Seleucia. I have not moved it to make things better. We have kept it there as the true capital for our nation. We have 352 family members, 278 regions. So we started with about 100, guys. I can't remember exactly. Maybe when we abandoned the first few settlements, 90... I think something like 94, 96, 98, something like that. And we have pretty much nearly tripled if it was in the low 90s we we have tripled in size in that time and it's hard to think about that when <laughs> when you start as the seleucids and you already have a monstrous empire 278 regions we've won 326 battles and lost 37 and uh, a lot of those losses very few of those were on the on the uh, manual campaign very many of them will have been uh, ship battles and auto-resolve battles. So I'm very happy with that. A 10 to 1 ratio, pretty much. But we have played, or, or had, 326 battles. We are allied still with the Gete and Epirus and uh, Sarka. We have lots of trade agreements. Lots of guys. Uh, we are at war with the GCS, Tylus, Sirachis and the Adrissians, even though they didn't want to. We tried to get peace with a few of those. Um, Kyrene and the Parthians are tributaries or protectorates of us, so pretty much owned by us as well, which is awesome. So let's have a look at the faction rankings. We have literally gone off the charts. We are that strong. Let's stick all factions in there. Yes. <laughs> when I'm assuming that's Rome. Yeah. When we overtook Rome. Wow. We have, like, since then, we've never looked back. <laughs> Military ranking. We have actually just surpassed Rome. Wow, they, st they still have an extremely strong military. So fighting them would have been fun, but unfortunate for them. Look at the Antigonids. Look at the Antigonids. I'll plop them there and there so you can see them. They got to here, and this is when we started attacking them. And goodbye, Antigonids. <laughs> <laughs> Carthage had a bit of a dip here. Whether, whether that's war with someone, I don't know. Uh, but Belge also quite strong. But we are... Yeah, apart from us and Rome, everyone else is small potatoes, really. And look at that production ranking. <laughs> that's kind of insane. I don't know how we were so low down here. I think it's based on how many settlements you're building in overall so yeah i don't know how that works exactly but whatever that is that's quite an insane jump <laughs> and territories like oh my god <laughs> then the closest people probably have about 40 and we have 300 and what was it three 320 sorry um 278 <laughs> that's obscene man that is obscene. All factions. There we go. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, God. Look at the finance. Uh, but, yeah. Three, uh, 278. Nearest people have about 40. Oh, spicy. And financials. Yeah, I know we've stopped spending money. But, yeah. We would have probably just been up here. But we are by far the richest faction. Obviously, because we have the most settlements. Population-wise... This is real, I believe. Real time, guys. So we have more than 4 million population in the game. 4 million. No wonder my computer was struggling a little bit <laughs> towards the end. 4 million. When we got over a million, I don't, I couldn't believe it. I genuinely could not believe it. And now... We are over 4 million population, boys. 4 million. That is obscene. Oh, we've got to take a screenshot of that. We're also going to take a screenshot of the diplomatic standing if it loads. It always struggles with the diplomatic standing. So, 
take a screenshot of that. Now, let's go on to our economy. This is going to be filthy reading. We have nearly a million turn income, 890,000. We probably only need about 15 more turns and we'd be over a million uh, as well. Farming, 119,000. Not too much. Mining, not much at all, 30,000. Trade, 500. And 7,000. I remember when we last looked at this, trade and taxes were kind of similar. But now trade is by far the most we're making. 507,000. We got nothing from merchants, obviously. We don't have merchants. Taxes, 194,000. I mean, everywhere's on low. So we could make that even more if we wanted to. And yeah. Uh, other, which I don't know what the other is. It's, I'm, I'm guessing that's population growth per turn. Also, an expense of other here as well. I don't really know what that is. Um, Construction-wise, oh yeah, this is expenditure. We haven't built though, so this is going to be a bit skewed. Uh, but this is mainly for looking at the army upkeep. And yeah, army upkeep, we've got 745 units. Nearly 200 Akontistai. <laughs> 30 Greek archers, 43 reform swordsmen, Agira Speedes, 19 normal Agira Speedes, 30 Greek archers, 25, uh, thir uh, 25 Greek peltas, 13 Greek hoplites, 8 Indian war elephants, heavy. Oh, nice. And just a lot of other different units. Here we go. Neo Cretan archers, 47 of those boys. I was not expecting that. 25 cataphracts, 96 bodyguards, 20 hetairoi, 22 hypastists. Only four chariots, interesting. 15 Thorakitai, 13 Zistaphoroi, and 18 Thuriophoroi, and 35 Triremes. We didn't get much of a navy. That's the one thing we didn't really get that much of. But wow, what an army. We have 745 units. <laughs> we are making nearly a million, guys, as well. So let's have a look at the family tree. We did look at this last time, but let's have another look. We have kept the bloodline. We can't zoom out here, unfortunately. I, I would love to be able to zoom out. But we can go. Seleucus Nicator, we never played as him. He was our... Oh, my God. Look how big this family tree is now. <laughs> and then we played with Antiochus I, who was a good guy. Not really... Didn't really manage to do that much in his life because he's quite old at the start of the game. Then we gave it, by tradition, to our second son, skipping Seleucus. But we gave it to Antiochus, the builder. But Seleucus was the man behind the building, if you remember from those intros, guys. Um, so, yeah, if you remember from those intros, Seleucus was the man uh, behind the building. But Antiochus got us labelled with the name. Antiochus the second, the builder. And I think after his death, many Seleucid will call him Antiochus the Great. Megas Basilius, the king of the world. So... Uh, his second son, by tradition, we gave the kingship to the second son, Antiochus the Angry, Antiochus Thymomenos, who was a very angry man, not very happy with his father for giving him the kingship when he wanted his older brother to be king. He didn't think he was suited to kingship, and he was roundly disliked by the people, especially after such a great king and Antiochus the Builder. But... I think historians, if he was a real person, would look back and see his reign to be a success. Uh, shrouded with bloodshed uh, against many different factions, whereas Antiochus the Builder's wars were, were, very, um, were either very slow, like Cappadocia, or they were wars of... Um, sorry, wars like uh, the Ptolemies. Big wars, whereas Antiochus Zabinas warred against many different people and fought many different people. He had no children, no heirs, and it's surprising that there were no rebellions in the lands when he gave it to his favorite nephew, Diodotus Nicator, Diodotus the Conqueror of Greece, Diodotus the Greek Warlord, the man who, uh, so he set up the invasion of Greece and Diodotus capitalized on it. So a lot of his work, Antiochus Zabinas, was really very crucial in that invasion of Greece that has been so successful under Diodotus, our current king. And it looks like the line of succession is safe. Hopefully he has a second son. So uh, thematically they could give it to the second son. But he was the favorite nephew 
of Antiochus Sabinas. And of course, is a Nicator as well. So he, of course, follows the line down here. The line is unbroken, even though it had to go to a nephew. It is still a Seleucid, which is glorious. And plenty of other people, if we look. Seleucos up there. We've got so many different people that have had such a uh, an impact on us during this campaign. Seleucus the Lewd, what a man. Andragoras the Thinker. Atlas the Harsh. Got so many people in here that, uh, that of course, down these lines. Aristarchus, of course, uh, to Aristandros, because he led to... No, not Diodotus, that's the wrong one. Seleucus the Liar, I remember that guy. Uh, but yeah, we've got so many people. Anchises, Ariathus the Handsome, of course. Ariathus' reforms if, with the army, very important. With Andragoras, the Andragorian reforms. Different line down here of Alexandros. Some of these guys, Chias, Alefkos, uh, Achaos. Achaos the foul over there. Andromarchus the Cruel was one of our good generals early on. Bantes the Builder. Oh, some glorious people in here. Uh, and many more lines as well. <laughs> Theodotus, Aeces, Atalos. Have we got Cakes? No, these are all Builder guys. Dragras the Kind. I don't remember that guy. Adimanthos, there we go. Adimanthos fighting in the north with his son Carpus and Zoilos, who died at the hands of the Bactrians and the Parthians. Of course, many different lines over here. These guys are more builders again. But yes, glorious, glorious lineages to go through. Some really cool people that uh, it's good to remember over here. So many lines. Oh my god. <laughs> Argios. Oh my. Lo Eumenes, there he is, Eumenes, overconfident in his com uh, command of Parthia and led to the death of them as well. Don't need to go into lists, really, do we? But we got <laughs> lots and lots of settlements. Let's go for turn income. Seleucia, let's have a look. 28,000 Seleucias making. Bactria Zariaspa, 18,000. Mazaka as well is a fantastic settlement. 14,000. Uruk, 25,000. So why is that underneath here? Let's go for turn income. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no, that's 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 not money. 10,000 there. <laughs> that's people. 23,000 for Seleucia. That's gone down a bit because I think our generals died there. 15,000. 13,000. Uruk, 10,000. Alexandria, Ariana... 10,000. Some really, really special places that we've had as well. Well, guys, that is really finally it. And it's kind of sad. So comment down below your favorite moments from the campaign. I have loved this campaign. It's been really fun. And I just want to thank all you guys for your support on this campaign. Alexander's Empire is restored. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. Please do like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.